The Daedalus from Project R3D, an incredibly capable machine that produces wonderful models. And in fact, I've done an episode on the models that it's made and how good they looked, but we've run into a problem and I've done test prints and we've implemented a fix and now it's time to test it. Let's do this. There you are. Welcome back. Look at all these things. These are all test prints for the Project R3D Daedalus. It's been printing fine until all of the sudden it wasn't. And it was very evident in these prints right here. That's Daft Punk right there. A little mini Daft Punk from Wexter, but still Daft Punk, right? And those don't look very good. I printed those and I posted them to Twitter and there's a problem with them. And as you can see, there's a consistent repetitive issue. And normally when we talk consistent repetitive layer issues in a Cartesian machine, it's because one or two of the Z motors just aren't working properly or the, the plastic isn't extruding right, something like that. Yeah, we can't do that with this machine though because it has three different lead screws for Z and it trams the bed level rather than having the nozzle kind of ride up and down for a mesh. So what we need to do is troubleshoot. And this was really stumping me. We did these Daft Puck models right here. I did them a couple times and I thought, well, maybe it's the filament. So I, I did some in some atomic PLA and those also don't look right. And you can see the issue inside of them. And it was like, oh, okay, time to troubleshoot. Well, it's not the filament. Maybe it's the extrusion multiplier. Maybe it's the nozzle. Maybe it's, it's something else. And so what we did, I, I printed lots of CHEP cubes. I mean, there's a ton of them right there, but we don't really need to pay attention to those. I printed a lot of these boxes because I wanted to see if the layer issue reproduced in a vase mode. If the problem reproduced in vase mode, then we could rule out some things. Have a look at that right there, that one. Crazy, right? Look at that, that's in vase mode. And that was printed in the middle of the build plate. And so I talked with Joe over at Project R3D and we, we tried a couple different things and he had an idea and he said, print one of these, but at each of the three lead screw locations because maybe one of the lead screws just isn't turning the proper amount. I thought that was a good idea. So here's what I did. I printed small boxes, one at each of the three lead screw locations. And I was like, blown away. Two of the three look a lot better than the third. One of the lead screws isn't turning properly. Well, I thought, well, I, everything is, is lubricated. Everything is, is fine. There's nothing binding. Maybe it's the stepper motors. I could just throw in a different stepper. And that's when Joe was like, no, no, no. <laughs> these are LDO 0.9 degree stepper motors. So these are special in that you can't just throw a normal stepper motor on there. A normal stepper motor is going to be, I believe it's 1.8 degree, meaning each turn of the shaft is going to be 1.8 degrees of a 360 degree circle. When you have a 0.9 degree stepper motor, it means that each turn of the shaft is 0.9 degrees of the 360 degrees of the circle, giving you greater precision because there's twice as many stops that the stepper can stop at as the barrel turns in the 360 degrees of the circle. I didn't have a spare one of these and so Joe sent three more and that's what I put in the machine. I've taken the last 30 minutes and added the stepper motors to the machine Here's how that went. The back and bottom covers were removed before this, so I had easy access to everything. There are three Z motors, each held in with four screws. The three motors support three couplers and three lead screws, and those all connect to a bed riding on three linear rails. Once a coupler is detached from the motor shaft and all four screws holding the motor in place are removed, all that's left is carefully disconnecting the wires, and you can set that motor aside. To install a new stepper motor, connect it in the machine with the four screws. Move the coupler in place over the shaft and tighten the screws on the coupler. Do that with all three stepper motors and your job is done. And you deserve a milkshake. Success! There we go, it means we're set. So three brand new 0.9 degree LDO stepper motors are now in the machine. Everything's replaced. I've got the heated bed nice and hot. So what I'm gonna do is go through and re-level, recalibrate the machine because we moved some things around on Z. So it's just a good idea to recalibrate everything. I'm gonna put some new filament in. We're gonna start a print. And then when it's done, we're gonna take a look. In fact, the print we're gonna do is Daft Punk. And in using the same G code as before, it's gonna help us verify things are working, but it's also going to test 
whether or not we've worked it harder, made it better, done it faster, or made it stronger. Let's do this. Look at that, the prints are done. My guess is you just saw a fantastic time-lapse. And actually, while that time-lapse was being filmed, my wife prepared a wonderful salmon dinner. It was delicious. A little bit of uh, butter, onion, lemon. Mm, so good on the barbecue. But listen, prints are done, and we need to get those off the build plate so we can compare with these. Let's just do that. Oh, that's fun. One, two, banana. Oh yeah. So while still supported, what we can do is compare with this one. And what I want to do is look for essentially repeating patterns, right? Over here, these with the problem showed a repeating pattern within the layers. And so if we don't have a repeating pattern, there could be layer inconsistencies, but if, as long as it's not repeating, then we know that we've solved the problem. So if I look right here, I can definitely see a repeating pattern within the filament. And if I look here, I don't see repeating. Okay, test number one, we have passed. So now the ultimate test would be to compare against these two. And so give me a moment, we're gonna have to de-support. A few moments later. So with these now de-supported, unsupported, with supports removed, we can do a comparison, one right next to the other. And I can tell on these here, especially shining a light above it, I can definitely see a repeating pattern within the layers. And that's the problem we were trying to mitigate and fix. So if I move my light over to here, I do not see a repeating pattern within the prints. Everything looks fantastic. It looks like it should. Here, I'm gonna turn these around. I'm doing this because the backs of the models are a smooth, continual surface. And looking on the backs of these, you can definitely see the layer inconsistency in a regular repeating pattern. But once you move over to here, you don't have that regular repeating pattern anymore. There might be an inconsistency or two, and that's going to be mitigated with proper tuning in a profile for this filament. And this is Polyterra from Polymaker. But we don't see that repeating consistent pattern. So it's great. Look at that. We've actually, we've actually solved the problem using Daft Punk. And this is fantastic because it means the Daedalus is now at full strength. And we should be able to print all the things with it now without having to worry about a repeating problematic pattern within the layers. That's exciting. Now that it's at full strength, again, is there something specific you'd like to see printed on it? If there is, let me know down in the comments. Well, that was fun. I was a little bit involved, a little nerdy, a little techy. We kind of dove deep into some things and I hope I explained it in a way that made you understand. I hope you learned something today, because I sure did. Well, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. And uh, with love from Seattle, as always, high five.